Hi hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be talking about, well, today we're going to take a look at the VRM thermal results for this board right here when tested inside a case. So, yeah, and since this can be pretty quick, um, let's make it pretty quick. So, um, first things first, the... I, I guess let's... No, first things first, let's introduce the board. So this is an MSI B450M mortar titanium. So it's an MATX motherboard, it comes in this titanium color. It's basically like a, uh, it's kind of metallic looking, but, uh, it, it's also pretty gray or white. Um, it's, it's like a pale gray with a bit of metallic mixed into it. So, uh, anyway, MSI calls that titanium. Um, you can also get the board in black, in which case it's just a regular B450M mortar. It's MATX, obviously. And, um, it has a four plus two phase uh, VR. Well, four, yeah, four plus two phase VRM. You have two phases for SOC power. You have four phases for your V core. Um, it's the bog standard MSI four phase VRM, though. It actually got a slight downgrade. So on a lot of their other motherboards, they use uh, slightly better on semiconductor MOSFETs. This uses slightly worse Sino power MOSFETs. But there's still some of the best MOSFETs that, like, within this price category, like this board right now, you can still pick it up for, like, 100 quid, at least in the UK. I don't know about other countries that didn't bother, didn't really bother to check. You can check yourself, right? Like, eh. <laughs> anyway. Um, Within like this price range, these are by far some of the best discrete MOSFETs you're going to come come across because the only MOSFETs that I'm aware of that are better than the ones MSI is using uh, here are the ones MSI is using on like the MSI X470 Gaming Plus or the MSI X470 Gaming Pro Carbon. So yeah, um, you know, decent, like electrically the VRM is pretty damn good. Um, and now it's just a matter of like how well does that heatsink work because this is quite a bit more substantial than what you find on a on a lot of motherboards. Um, and of course, I was testing with a twenty seven hundred X and Prime ninety five um, and sixteen gigs of uh, sixteen gigs of RAM. So anyway, let's take a look at the the test setup here. Um, here's a peek at the the results though. Right now they're not cleaned up. So here's the uh, the usual setup for the K-type thermocouple. So when I test, I both use a K-type thermocouple and I also use software measurements from the motherboard itself, just in case the software is not working, as, as, uh, as that's often the case for, say, Asus motherboards. Asus motherboards generally don't have working temperatures. Um, unless they're like ROG boards. In which case you don't need the temperatures anyway, because those boards are fine. But the low-end boards generally don't have working temperatures. So, anyway, so I do use a K-type. The K-type is, uh, in this case, like, it's held in place with some thermal pad that's sticky. Um, and essentially, it is jammed right up against the leg of an inductor because that is a direct metal connection to the MOSFETs. So, in theory, it should get us a really close to real uh, VRM temperature reading. So... That's what we're, that's, that's how I'm taking the K-type thermocouple measurements. Um, here's the airflow setup of the case. All of the fans are maxed out throughout testing. This is how I test all of the time. There's an R9 Fury in there. I'm using a 1200 watt Antec power supply. The case is some kind of Corsair thing that I can't remember the name of right now. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a pretty, like, you, it's not the most airflow restricted setup ever. Um, some people might point out, oh, but you have the, the radiator as intake. The logic behind that is that your motherboard should not force you to run hot CPU temperatures. Okay, like, if you are compromising your CPU cooling for the sake of VRM temperatures, like, get a different motherboard. <laughs> that's, that's my response to that. Basically, running the radiator as intake means that the radiator gets the freshest air possible, meaning you get the best possible CPU temperatures. If your motherboard doesn't suck, this kind of airflow setup should be optimal. Um, you might sometimes want to maybe prioritize, like, GPU cooling, in which case, uh, the radiator in the front may not be optimal, but, uh, still. Like, I think if you care about your CPU temperatures, this is what you should be running. Because um, running the radiator as exhaust uh, leads to issues like, I don't know, the GPU cooking your CPU when you have uh, a load on both of them. So, anyway, that's the airflow setup I've been testing with uh, the entire time. And that's also the justification for why I use this airflow setup, because it's just best for CPU temperatures. Um... Anyway, uh, and as you can probably tell, that is a uh, NZXT Kraken X62, I think. Um, it is on the 140mm fans, so 
yeah, that's that's the that's the setup, and the pump is maxed out the entire testing period as well. So that's our uh, airflow configuration. Now let's take a look at the results, and that did not work the way I wanted it to. There. Um, so here are our VRM thermal results, which actually bam. Um, and as you can clearly see, well, as you can't see because it's at the bottom. Uh, the MSI board is uh, these results right here. I did not really bother to test like Fire Strike combined. I used to do that, but I, I decided it's kind of pointless because even like the worst motherboards I tested do okay in that test, right? So it's just a case of like, well, that's freaking pointless. Um, so anyway, here we have uh, the um, the the B450M mortar. And uh, at 1.4 volts, the K-type thermocouple, right? So that, that's that's how that works. K-type on this side, software on the other side. This is K-type only because this is an Asus motherboard and it's not an ROG board. Therefore, the VRM temperatures don't work. Um, <laughs> fun how that works. Because um, especially this board would need that considering that it shut down during testing. But uh, anyway... Um, so as we can clearly, so basically the motherboard hits 95 degrees uh, Celsius on the K-type, 97 degrees on the software. So software seems to be working correctly. In fact, it's measuring higher than what I'm measuring on the back of the board. So definitely looks like the, the uh, you know, temperature monitor, like the, the board knows how to measure its own temperature and it's working properly. Um, in terms of how this compares to all, compares to all of the other boards that we have here, well, for 1.4 volts, this is basically the second best motherboard you can get. Um, and I'm serious about that because like if we look here, so this is the MSI X470 Gaming Pro Carbon that gets uh, 86 degrees by 93 degrees, uh, 86 degrees, 93 degrees, and that's at 300 kilohertz switching frequency, which in reality translates to 350 kilohertz. Um, that's 1.4 volts, Prime 95, small FFTs. Also, if anybody's wondering about how long I run the test for, it's literally until the VRM temperature stops rising or the motherboard fails. That's a fail, okay? Uh, so, um, yeah. And the logic being like, I've seen some other reviews out there where they test like 15 minutes or 30 minutes or something like that, just some arbitrary time period. And it's just like, well, if the mother, like let's say the motherboard doesn't overheat in 15 minutes, okay? What if you're running a render that lasts two hours and is AVX accelerated? Like, you're going to be pretty screwed in, like, you know, an hour if the motherboard doesn't overheat. Like, if the motherboard just has a really uh, heavy heat sink that isn't actually good at shedding heat. Because that's the thing. Like, um, I think as far as, uh, like, this took forever to get up to temperature. That took forever to get up to temperature uh, as well. But uh, this board ultimately runs cooler than either of those because this heat sink, uh, the heat sink on the B450 and mortar, it's not quite as heavy as some of the other boards. But it certainly has a hell of a lot more surface area. And as a result, it's actually good at keeping temperatures low rather than just delaying the inevitable. Which actually, this heatsink just sucks. Like, that one's neither heavy nor high surface area. That one's just really, really bad. Um, the only reason why, like, I mean, honestly, this isn't okay. That's 300 kilohertz switching frequency, right? So, 300 kilohertz switching frequency, 105 degrees. So, that's a fail for that Asus board. Compared to, like, like this is a B450 board, right? That's a, like $150, $160 X470 board. This is like $125 X470 board. This actually has the better MOSFETs than the B450M. But this has a terrible VR. Like, the heatsink on that is worse than what you get on the B450M, which is why it ends up doing so badly. This has a god-awful four-phase. Like, the MOSFETs on this thing are just terrible. Um, they're just as bad if not, like, the, the ASRock X470 Master SLI has the same, like, equally terrible MOSFETs. And I think the SLI, like, the Master from ASRock has even worse VRM heatsinks than this. So this, like, this is not doing that great. The, the Master is going to do worse. Um, um, but anyway, so as you can clearly see, this little B450 board beats that X470 and that X470 and this X470 board as well. For VRM thermals, which uh, I mean, you know, it's simple. This has a heatsink. This has a fashion accessory. This has an attempt at a heatsink. This has a terrible VRM, <laughs> right? It's that, like the heatsink on this is actually relatively decent. It somehow managed to not overheat, even though it's by far the worst VRM out of all of the ones here. Um, 
Though admittedly that board doesn't even have load line calibration, which causes some serious issues with like getting the voltage to the same level that all of the other boards do, um, which is, yeah. Um, so yeah, th th this board is just generally, I would like this board for a 2700X is just a terrible idea. Um, but this for is 2700X, I'd say is completely viable. I mean, the board, even if you run freaking Prime 95 small FFTs, for the runtime on this was, I think, like when I took the measurement, it was like 40 minutes of runtime at that point. Now, admittedly, this board ran for like an hour before I took a measurement just because this one's VRM heatsink is so damn heavy. Um, and I think this one was doing like 45 minutes. That one, I think that shutdown was about an hour and a half, but the first temperature measurement, like that one stabilized after like uh, 40 minutes or something like that. Like this one has a re rather efficient VRM. It's just that the heatsink is completely useless. So... Yeah, anyway, um, this board, you know, good job in terms of VRM temperatures. Quite frankly, I would be uh, completely, uh, what is it? Like, I, I would trust this board to run a 2700X rendering just fine, especially because you wouldn't want to run 1.4 volts anyway. Um, that's a bit too high for a 2700X in terms of, like, not degrading the CPU over time if you're running it as an all-core uh, overclock. Uh, if you actually see the precision boost system do its thing, then it obviously goes way higher on voltages, but it knows what it's doing, whereas, uh, and it won't give you that much voltage under all core load. Basically, it's balancing, like, current, load temperature, and, uh, we're, like, yeah, like, current, load temperature, and core, ca core uh, number of cores loaded against the voltage, which is why it will often push the voltage a bit high. Um, because it knows what it's doing. Whereas if you're doing, you know, all core static overclocking, you're just kind of stuck with whatever you set. Um, so yeah, anyway, so 1.4 volts, you know, a bit too high. So if you're actually like overclocking a 2700X or, you know, doing the reasonable thing and just not doing anything with your 2700X in terms of uh, dialing, it in, dialing it in, this board won't have any VRM thermal issues with it. Um, if you have like a 2700, then it's perfect for maxing that out as well. Like it does really, really well as far as I'm concerned. And it does better than most of the X470 boards on here. And I think the next X470 board that I'm gonna be adding is still gonna do worse than this B450 board. And I mean, you know, it's it's just like, heat sinks freaking matter, right? Like, th that's the main thing. This board's VRM is not better than the VRM on the MSI X470 Gaming Plus. Um, the, like, there there's not much, um, like, the only reason why this board is doing so well is that VRM heatsink. So, yeah, good good job uh, MSI with actually designing a VRM heatsink that works, unlike, you know, most other board vendors. Um, and the cool thing is you can actually get this motherboard, um, I mean, you can get that same heatsink on a bunch of other MSI motherboards. So that, that's pretty cool that they've decided to start using it uh, all over the place. And here's... Here's just to give you an idea of why this heatsink works so well. Like, look at that. It's got surface area instead of just being a useless blob of metal. Um, yeah, who, who'd have thought? If you make an actual heatsink instead of a fashion accessory, you get good VRM thermals <laughs> on a four phase, right? Like, it's not like this VRM is all that special. Um, it's just that it has a proper cooling system. So, yeah, um, good job MSI on that. Oh, where did it go? There. Uh, good job MSI with the, the VRM on this, and, um, yeah, good board. Um, I'm, I'm honestly, like, I'm not surprised by the results. I, I was honestly expecting this, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there, there's the proof that if, if you have a proper heatsink, you, you can get away with, uh, well, you can get away with, you know, not necessarily a r ridiculous VRM. Now, some people might be wondering, like, why don't I have higher-end boards on here? Because, well, one, the only high-end X470 uh, AM4 board I have is, like, the Crosshair 7 Hero, and there's really no point t putting that in these charts because it's not going to overheat. Like, I I'm sorry, but it just isn't worth it because it's not going to... Like, that board's going to get, like, 60s um, in, in this kind of test scenario. So... Anyway, uh, that is it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. Um, and uh, yeah, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, uh, I have a Patreon. There's also t-shirts and other stuff you can get on Teespring. There's links to both down in the description below. And uh, huge thanks to basically the patrons and, you know, people who buy stuff on Teespring for actually funding the purchase of this board. Because this is not like I got a review sample, I actually bought this thing. 
and the 2700X for it. So yeah, um, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye. And it's not short. <laughs> Good job, me. Anyway.